recall our last class, we ended up leaving off with talking about the Friedel's Crafts isolation, and we were going to get into an extra advantage with it. Well, need to actually make that plural that there are advantages about this reaction that we need to talk about. Okay. The first advantage that we want to discuss is something called the Clemenson reduction. The Clemenson reduction. This in your book is found on page 784. 784 of Wade. What's going on here? Well, Suppose your boss gave you the molecule benzene and they wanted you to add on this propyl group to benzene to make propyl benzene. Remember what we saw in our last lecture that if we try to do this by Friedel's Crafts alkylation, it added on the middle carbon to give you isopropyl benzene. Well, Here, what we're going to do is find a way to take care of that. And that what we're going to do is do an isolation of three carbons, including the carbonyl. So we're going to put on this acyl group on benzene. To give us this acylated benzene. And then what we can do with this acylated benzene is a further reaction where we're going to take this and react with these reagents here. So here's a new reaction for us. Zinc and Hg just simply means the two are mixed together and we have HCl. What this reaction is going to do, it's going to reduce the carbonyl to a CH2. So it converts the acyl group to an alkyl group. Okay. It's a reduction, isn't it? Because I've gone from a double bond and an oxygen, and I've gotten rid of those. This is what's called a Clemenson reduction. Okay? A Clemenson reduction. Okay? And so this is a synthetic strategy because I put this acyl group on, okay, that I can call maybe a hidden alkyl group or a hidden propyl group, right? Because all I have to do is react it with this reagent set here and it converts it to the alkyl group, okay? So this prevents a rearrangement and it really allows me to add any alkyl group on I want to of however length 
without giving me any kind of rearrangement. Okay? So the first advantage is the prevention of rearrangements. Okay? That's our first advantage or strategy that this acylation reaction affords. But there's a second advantage, and it still makes use of this Clevenson reduction. So let's look at our second advantage. And to introduce our second advantage, let's suppose we wanted to make this molecule meta ethyl phenol from benzene. How could we do, how could we get from the beginning to the end here? Okay. This is really an introduction to synthesis or what we call synthetic strategy in organic chemistry. And in order to do this we always ask two questions. First question is What is the relationship between the two groups? Okay. The relationship is that they are meta to each other. Okay. So that's the first question I always ask. Simple question, yeah, but it gives you the order of how to do this. The second question you ask is which group do you put on first? And that's based on the directing ability. Well, which group am I going to put on first? This is what an ortho pair director. I want to put that on there first. What about this one? This is an alkyl group, which is what an ortho pair director. So here we might say, is this impossible to make? Answer, no. We're going to put this on previously as an acyl group. And remember that the acyl group is a meta director. So let's go ahead with this strategy. So let's take our benzene. and put on this acyl group. So that goes on very nicely, like that. Remember this acyl group is not only a meta director, but it's also a what? Hidden alkyl group. I can convert this to this very easily with the Clevenson reduction. I don't want to do it yet. I want to take advantage of it being a meta director first. So now I will add on the OH using hydrogen peroxide and HSO3F. You should now be having these reagents down, memorized. So that puts the OH on. Now, once I have the relationship 
satisfied, meta, now I can convert to the alkyl group using what? Zinc, Hg, and HCl. So now we reduce that down. Okay. So this is the second major advantage of the Clemenson reduction. It allows me to have a meta director on there, which I can easily convert to an alkyl group, even though that's an ortho para. I take advantage of it being a meta director, and then I convert, and I'm done with the reaction. Okay? So those are two powerful advantages. Okay? Meta director advantage. And also the first one, which was what? The prevention of carbocation rearrangements. Okay, well, this chapter is starting to wind down a little bit. Let's learn how to put on some additional groups here. Next, how to put on the carboxylic acid group. Do you remember the name of this molecule? Benzoic acid. Okay. In order to put this acid group on, I need to have an alkyl group already on the ring. So I need to have an alkyl group already on the ring, such as a methyl, or it could be an ethyl or a propyl, okay? And I can react this with KMnO4. And it converts it to the acid group. So it doesn't matter what the alkyl group is, even if it was a long butyl group, it clips the whole group off and converts it to this acid group. Okay. So KMnO4 stands for potassium permanganate. It's a very strong oxidizer. It's oxidizing this CH3. Make a note of that. And so this group, the acid group, gets added on. Potassium permanganate is also very purple-like once it dissolves in solution. Okay, there is one caveat here. This reaction will not work if I have a T-butyl group. Okay. If we have a T-butyl group, we get an NR, which stands for no reaction. Okay. So make a note of that. Okay, let's look at another reaction. Let's 
Let's go back to ethyl benzene. We know how to put the ethyl group on the ring. What we're going to do here is define this carbon here as the benzylic carbon. Okay. So what's the definition of a benzylic carbon? Write it down. It's the carbon directly attached to the benzene ring. It's the carbon directly attached to the benzene ring. So you have a benzylic carbon, and these hydrogens would also be called benzylic hydrogens. Okay. So what we're going to do is a reaction at the benzylic carbon Remember our friend NBS and bromosacinamide. Remember it brominated an allylic carbon, and that's kind of what it's doing here. It's kind of an allylic double bond carbon. And so we can put the bromine on there. Okay, this reaction would also work with just toluene. Okay, again, benzylic carbon, NBS, and it puts a bromine on there. Note it's taking away a hydrogen in each case. So here I would be making what? Benzyl bromide. Okay. And one of the big things when you put a bromine on a carbon is that you've created a good leaving group. And so it sets you up to do SN2 reactions if you wanted to. That is, if I had a nucleophile, I could bring it in and attack, kick off the bromine, and so it's a way to put nucleophiles on that carbon. Okay, let's look at some other reactions. If you note, the reactions that we are doing are on alkylated benzenes. Let's do another reaction on an alkylated benzene. This time we'll have a new reagent. Again, I hope you're keeping track of your reagents, putting them on note cards so that you keep track of them. Our new reagent this time is manganese dioxide. What this does is it's simply going to convert the benzylic carbon to a carbonyl. Write it down. It's going to convert the benzylic carbon to a carbonyl. So if we do that, here we end up with this molecule. Okay, note it's taking away two hydrogens. So we get what? Benzaldehyde. Okay, smells like almonds. Okay. Same thing here. What would be your product if you took ethyl benzene plus manganese dioxide? It would do what? Convert the benzylic carbon to a carbonyl, 
and it's taking away two of the hydrogens. And so here is another way to make acetophenone. Okay, remember the first way was by Friedel's Crafts acylation. Here you can do it by putting on an ethyl group and then oxidizing the benzylic carbon. So if you note, manganese dioxide is not as strong of an oxidizer as KMnO4. Remember, potassium permanganate oxidize the thing all the way to what? A carboxylic acid. Manganese dioxide is still an oxidizer, but it's not as strong. It just simply stops at converting the benzylic carbon to a carbonyl. Okay? So make a note of that. Okay, so these are, that's a summary of the reactions of alkylated benzenes, okay? So make sure you have those under your belt. Let's now look at reactions simply on the benzene ring. Let's do a little review. Remember from chemistry 241, if we took an alkene and reacted with H2 and platinum, okay, it would add those hydrogens here to saturate the alkene, okay? So this was what we call an hydrogenation reaction. Well, if you try to do the same thing with benzene, saturated with hydrogens. 
But one thing we can do in this hydrogenation is kind of mix both worlds here, okay? And that is do this kind of reaction. Let's suppose we had this molecule where note we have a double bond outside of the benzene ring and we're reacted with hydrogen and platinum. What do you think would happen here? Well, we've already seen that this combination would not affect the benzene ring, would it? But it would affect this double bond outside the benzene ring. So it would hydrogenate this part of the molecule, but not this part of the molecule. Okay. So what we say is that it's selective. And so we call this selective hydrogenation. that it won't touch the benzene ring because it's too stable, but it will touch any double bond outside of it, and so hydrogenate it all the way down to the alkane. Okay. All right, let's look at one last reaction of benzene. This is what's called the birch reduction. Here what we're going to do is take benzene and react it with sodium NH3 ammonia and an alcohol such as methanol. Okay, This is kind of a strange reaction in that what it does to benzene is it reorients the double bonds to something like this. Okay? So it's a reduction because I got rid of one of the double bonds and this is what's called the Birch reduction. Okay? So put this reaction in your notes. So at this point here We've come a pretty good distance in our benzene chemistry. We have just a little bit more to go, which we'll cover next time as we, we're going to study the chemistry of phenol. And then we'll also do some synthetic uh, synthesis problems of benzene as well. So we'll look to see you next time.